Hi, this is an educational slide on diabetic retinopathy. As we know, diabetes is caused by chronic elevation of blood sugar. It can cause multiple organ damage including the eye. This is the anatomy of a normal eye. The eye is like an old camera which consists of a lens and film. Retina represents the film in an old camera. Diabetes can affect almost every structure in the eye. Among the most common structures involved are the retina. Once it affects the retina, the condition is only reversible if you treat them early. Diabetes can also affect the lens and causing early cataract. The loss of vision is treatable if you come early. Diabetes can also affect the optic nerve which is the main route of transmission of visual information to the brain. Glaucomatous damage is because of high pressure in the eye. Our eyes has to have its own pressure. I am not talking about blood pressure but pressure in the eye. Chronic elevation of eye pressure will cause damage to the optic nerve which we called glaucoma. Unfortunately glaucoma is not reversible. Hence, early detection is very important. Diabetic changes to the eye is called diabetic retinopathy. There are many stages of the disease which will be discussed later. How does diabetes damage the retina? High level of sugar will cause damage to the blood vessel wall and concurrently causes increased stickiness of the blood content. This will alter the flow of blood in the vessel which eventually disrupt the flow of oxygen in the eye. Once the blood vessel wall is damaged, there will be leakages of the vascular content and blockage of the vessel. The retina will be starving of oxygen and become very sick. The sick retinal tissue will be crying for help. They will send out a messenger which is called VGEF. The VGEF will stimulate the development of abnormal vessels which easily rupture and bleed. Now, what will the patient experience in terms of eyesight? Symptoms can range from no visual symptom at all which can happen even in the advanced form of disease. This is the reason why regular screening is important in such a case. Occasionally if there is bleeding, patient will experience seeing floaters which is defined as seeing a movement particle in front of the eye, which also moves with every eye movement. Sometimes, patient may experience seeing distorted images. And lastly, they may have either chronic or sudden drop of vision. Now, what will happen if we don't screen diabetic eyes and left it untreated? The eye will end up with severe scarring formation and completely blind eye. Nowadays, we are seeing this more common in younger patients. These changes can be prevented with early detection and early treatment. The next question would be, when do they need to see an eye doctor? The key point for diabetic eyes are to treat them at the most appropriate time. Hence, screening of the eye is very very important even when the eyesight is still good. Occasionally patient did not realize they have poor vision in one eye and came very late after both eyes are involved. For type 2 diabetes, they need to see the eye doctor the moment they are diagnosed with diabetes. Whereas for diabetes type 1, they need to see the eye doctor for screening within 5 years of diagnosis. What will the doctor tell diabetic patient? Doctors will usually discuss about the stage of the disease. They will also discuss the possibility of whether there is presence of retinal swelling involving the macula. Macula is the center part of the retina which is used to see objects centrally. When it comes to stages of diabetic retinopathy, it can either be the non-proliferative stage or the proliferative stage. Non-proliferative stage occurs in the early form of the disease. There will be absence of abnormal vessel. Whereas the proliferative stage is when there is florid abnormal vessel in the eye. The abnormal vessel can either cause bleeding or scarring which are bad for the vision. What would be the treatment option for patients with diabetic retinopathy? Treatment can renders either from regular monitoring to laser treatment. Sometimes we do offer injection of anti-VGEF into the eye. Lastly, if the condition is so bad, we might offer the patient with surgery. Surgery is mainly to remove extensive blood, remove scar tissue or to fix any abnormal positioning of the retina. What are the common questions asked by patients? What is laser treatment? Laser treatment is applied on the peripheral retina to reduce the oxygen demand in the eye. This will encourage the resolution of abnormal vessels. It takes a few weeks to come into effect and lasers are given in a few sessions. What to expect when you visit an eye doctor? We will check the visual acuity of individual eye. We will measure the pressure of the eye using tonometer. Don't worry we will be using local anesthesia during examination. So, patient will not experience pain during examination. We also need the patient to be dilated. Normal size of pupil is just about 3 to 4 millimeters. To have a thorough examination of the retina, pupil need to be dilated. There will be some side effect after the dilatation. 
patient will experience glare and bright condition and will not be able to see near objects such as reading text on your phone. This will last only for two hours and it is advisable that either patient have someone else to drive for them and bring along your sunglasses to reduce the symptom of glare. Lastly, in some centers, they may perform some tests appropriately. If patient have retinal swelling in the eye or abnormal vessel with or without bleeding, they might need anti-VGF treatment. This is given by injecting the drug inside the eye. It is done under local anesthetic. This injection can help to shrink the abnormal vessel and prevent recurrent bleeding. However, the drug does not last long inside the eye. You may need repeated injection depends on the eye condition. Laser treatment is usually given in a few sessions. It helps to reduce the risk of severe blindness. Can we prevent diabetic retinopathy? Good control of sugar and other medical conditions such as hypertension and hypercholesterolemia can delay the disease process. Often patients do not have any symptoms even in advance eye disease. Regular monitoring and early screening is very important. Every stage of diabetic retinopathy have the its own follow-up schedule which depends on the severity. Thank you.